Hi, I'm Dr. Padram Garami, and I'm an assistant professor of dermatology at Northwestern University, and I'm going to discuss the development and application of a targeted fluorescence in situ hybridization assay for distinguishing melanoma from benign nevi. For those who are practicing dermatopathologists, it is well appreciated that there is a subset of melanocytic neoplasms in which it can be exceedingly difficult to accurately classify as benign or malignant. This has been repeatedly shown in the literature. I give you the following examples of such studies. In the first study by Dr. Ray Barnhill, a panel of experts reviewed 30 spitzoid melanocytic lesions, and they showed that in the vast majority, there was no consensus. And in fact, there were several lesions which the majority of the experts favored a benign diagnosis. However, the lesion resulted in metastasis. A similar study from Dr. Silver's group which in New York, which reviewed consultation-level cases, showed that amongst these cases, 25% of them, they had a high level of discrepancy. And lastly, this study from the French melanoma group, in which they reviewed a large group of atypical melanocytic lesions in childhood, showed that there was a very poor uh, inter-observer reliability in the diagnosis of pediatric melanoma. This is also evidenced by these quotes from several well-recognized textbooks in melanocytic pathology. For example, Massey and Lebois, which says that an unequivocal diagnosis can be exceedingly difficult and occasionally impossible in regards to atypical spitzoid lesions. From Croson, Magro, and Mim, in regards to the melanocytic proliferations, in some 6 to 8 percent of cases, confident distinction of Spitz nevi from malignant melanoma cannot be made. And from Moy and Krauss, for cases in which we are unable to diagnose either Spitz nevus or Spitzoid melanoma with confidence, we use the term Spitz tumor of uncertain malignant potential. And lastly, from Barnhill, Peepcorn, and Busum, Regarding the evaluation of Spitz tumors, depending on the severity of the atypia, one should acknowledge that melanoma cannot be completely excluded. Dr. Boris Bastian has clearly addressed this diagnostic dilemma using a technique known as comparative genomic hybridization. Using this technique, he has shown that melanocytic tumors can be classified according to chromosomal copy number changes. While 95% of melanomas have such changes, such changes are exceedingly rare in nevi. For example, melanomas frequently have gains on 7Q, 8Q, 6P, 1Q, 20Q, 17, and 3, and frequent losses on 9P, 10, 6Q, and 8P. Conversely, in nevi, such changes are limited to copy number gains in a small subset of Spitz nevi, approximately 20% of which show isolated gains in 11P. To reiterate this, this table shows common copy number aberrations in melanoma relative to nevi. Again, while 95% of melanomas have clonal chromosomal aberrations, such aberrations are limited only to a small subset of nevi approximately 20% of Spitz nevi, which have an isolated gain in 11P. Additionally, approximately 5% of Spitz nevi may show polyploidy. Using comparative genomic hybridization data, we performed a combinatorial analysis to identify the 14 chromosomal loci, which were most frequently altered in melanoma, but not in nevi. This led to the identification of the following 14 loci, which you see on the left-hand side of your screen. For each of these loci, which were frequently gained in melanoma, we selected a common oncogene in that region. For each of these loci, which were frequently deleted in melanoma, we selected a common tumor suppressor gene in that region as the fish target. Probes to each of these 14 fish targets were applied to a set of 95 melanomas and 94 nevi. On the x-axis, you can see each of the 14 probes, and on the y-axis, you can see the average number of signals per case. In green is the value for nevi, and in red is the value for melanoma. 
We selected the four probes which in combination showed the greatest difference between melanomas and nevi. This resulted in the identification of RREB1, which was from region 6P25, CEP6, which represents a centromeric portion of chromosome 6, MIB1, which comes from 6Q23, and CCND1, which comes from 11Q13. After identifying the following four probes, RREB1, MIB, CEP6, and CCND1 as the top four probes in differentiating melanoma from nevi, we applied these probes to a second cohort of melanocytic lesions. Within this cohort, we selected nevi, which can commonly represent difficulty in diagnosis, such as nevi on acral skin or, or nevi from genital skin, as well as congenital nevi and dysplastic nevi as well as a set of 51 melanomas. These four probes were applied to this second cohort of cases in order to identify the best parameters by which one could differentiate melanoma from nevi with these probes. Many potential parameters were plotted using a technique called receiver operator characteristic analysis this is simply a plot of the sensitivity versus 1 minus the specificity. The best parameters will obviously have a very high sensitivity and a very high specificity, hence the curve will bunch up in the upper left-hand corner of the graph. This led to the identification of the following four parameters as being best able to differentiate melanoma from nevi. This included if greater than 55% of the cells had more copies of the short arm of chromosome 6 relative to the centromere of chromosome 6, or if greater than 29% of the cells had greater than two copies of the short arm of chromosome 6, or if greater than 40% of the cells had less copies of the long arm of chromosome 6 relative to the centromere, or if greater than 38% of the cells had more than two copies of the long arm of chromosome 11. After identifying the four ideal probes and the optimal parameters by which to differentiate melanocytic nevi from melanoma in the first two cohorts of the study, we performed a third cohort evaluation in order to validate our findings. In this third cohort, we evaluated 86 nevi and 83 melanomas Amongst the nevi, we included many difficult cases, including Spitz nevi, nevi on acral skin, and blue nevi. In this evaluation, using the probes and the parameters that we identified in cohorts 1 and 2, we found a sensitivity of 86.7% and specificity of 95.4% in differentiating the melanocytic nevi from melanoma. The following is an example of a clear-cut case of melanoma showing destructive changes at the dermal epidermal junction, pagetoid changes, and dermal invasion, with clear gains in 6P25 as seen with the red probe. As you can see, almost all the cells identified have extra copies of 6P25. In green, we see fish analysis with 11Q13, which also clearly shows extra copies of 11Q13. So this case meets multiple criteria for melanoma, showing the utility of the assay. The following is an addition example of a clear-cut case of melanoma showing lentiginous growth at the dermal epidermal junction, irregular nesting, and pagetoid changes. Fish analysis using the 6P25 probe, as seen in the red, shows that almost all the cells, again, have extra copies of 6P25, clearly diagnostic of melanoma by fish.